God's everlasting love. God's everlasting love. And if you uh, didn't get an outline, there's an outline at the back there where you could uh, take notes. Let me go ahead and give you five promises of God. Don't you love it when you find promises from God? Because God never breaks a promise, folks. Never. Uh, Number one, there's no intimidation. No intimidation. And by the way, with five points, y'all are going to have to listen faster tonight, okay? That way I, I can pick up the pace. There is no intimidation. Number two, there's no deprivation. No deprivation. Number three, no accusation. You see in a pattern of I, T-I-O-Ns? <laughs> number four, there's no condemnation. And number five, there is no separation. And folks, all these are based on God's love. Okay? God's love. Let's look at Romans 8. Romans 8, uh, verse 31. The Bible says in Romans 8, 31, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? We can see right there, uh, in, in he was talking, you know, about two or three weeks ago, uh, uh, we covered verses 18 through 28 there, and uh, here uh, he is talking about uh, his love for us, God's everlasting love. He is for us, and, and let me say this too, he is in us, and he is with us, okay? God is for us, he's on our side, uh, he is in us, in the person of the Holy Spirit, and he is with us uh, every day of our lives. And so, if God is for us, who can be against us? And we, folks, we know who the enemy is, all right? The enemy is Satan, all right? It's the devil, it's, it's the demons. And uh, so, even though he intimidates, we don't have to back down. We should not fear is what I'm trying to say. And I believe with all my heart, fear is the number one tool of Satan. Okay, fear. He makes us want to fear. Uh, Just like going on right now, uh, the COVID, and that's all that's going on. And and folks, if you want to wear a mask, you wear a mask. All right, if you want to watch it online, you watch it online. Okay, but you know, there just comes a point, and I'm not saying these people don't trust God. I'm just saying that I believe part of his spiritual warfare is to make us think and and even to doubt God. He wants us to doubt God. All right? So uh, hold your finger there and go with me to 1 Peter 5, 8. 1 Peter 5, 8. Let me show you. 1 Peter 5, 8. The Bible says, Be sober, which means serious. Be vigilant, which means Uh, Stay with it, all right? Be be aware of what's going on. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Folks, we should not be intimidated by the devil, okay? Uh, God is on our side. God protects us. I think we should respect, okay? And when I say respect, the devil is real. Okay, his powers are real, but you have to realize we as Christians should not be intimidated. Why? Because God is for us. Okay, God is for us. And and it says, uh, also, it it talks about a roaring lion, and I don't know if you've ever heard one, but we've been to zoos, uh, we've been to that tiger thing up north here, and I'm telling you, at feeding time, it's incredible to hear their voices because it is, it is. I'm, what I'm, when I hear them, I just think, man, I'm glad there's some cage in between me and them, all right? Because it looks like, I mean, they literally throw them chunks of meat, the ones that we saw, and I'm thinking, that could be me, <laughs> all right? So I respect lions, okay? But I am not going to live in fear, all right? There is no intimidation with God. God has taken care of us. God is always with us. God will never leave us, and God will never forsake us. Uh, 1 John, 
Look at 1 John, just go a few, few more chapters there. 1 John 4, 1 John 4, 4. You are of God, okay? We are of God, Christians, little children, and have overcame them. We are overcomers, folks. When we, when we accepted Christ into our life, we have that dunamis. We have that power of the Holy Spirit inside of us, and we don't have to be intimidated. Why? Because we are overcomers. Uh, you have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. So we shouldn't be intimidated, folks. We should not fear. And I'm telling you, it almost seems like the world right now lives in fear. And we shouldn't fear. Yes, we should, it, you know, we should respect things. But we shouldn't lay at night and worry about things. Uh, you know, and I, I heard a, a statistic one time that said 70% of things we worry about never come true. So we need to, we need to realize that uh, there is no intimidation with God. God is I mean, most powerful. He is, he is almighty. He is God. There's no power stronger than God. And we need to remember that. So the first promise is there's no intimidation. The second problem, and, and by the way, when I talk about fear, there's, there's three things that we have to deal with in fear. One is our past. We should not fear our past. Folks, the past is our past. What's done is done. What happened yesterday doesn't, I mean, I mean, it's done. That's why we call it history. So we should not fear past. We should not fear the present, the day in which we live. This is not got, caught God by surprise. And the other thing we should not fear, and folks, this is so true, we shouldn't fear the future. I read the book. I know how this thing's going to end. And we are going to win. People all the time you know, ask, you know, Mike, what do you think? What do you think is going to happen? Folks, I'm telling you, we are seeing revelation come true in our lifetime is what we're seeing. So you read the rest of the story. I believe the next thing on God's prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church. Wouldn't it be neat for us all just to go out together? You know, I, I am praying to God that it'll happen on a Sunday morning. On a Sunday morning. We are worshiping here. We about, and I know what some of you are thinking, we'll about get to the preaching, and then God gets us out of here. All right? Folks, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it whenever he wants to go. So folks, quit being intimidated by Satan. Okay? No intimidation. Number two, there's no deprivation. Look at verse 32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things. Folks, if you think about what God has given us, he allowed you to wake up this morning. He allowed you to walk. I mean, everyone I know, that, everyone I've seen that's come in here, you walked in here. You walked in here. You had the power to do that. So he's given us life. And not only that, he has given us eternal life. And he's given us, look, look what it says, how shall he not? Delivered him up. It's talking about Jesus. Guess what God did? He gave us his best. Jesus Christ is our best. Folks, there's no, there's no second there. Jesus Christ is our best. You know this scripture, uh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. We will not perish, but have ever lasting life. There's no deprivation. Folks, everything we need is in Jesus Christ. Philippians tells us, but my God shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. Folks, that's scripture. And then the second verse that I want you to see here is Ephesians chapter 3. Look at Ephesians 3 verse 20. Man, I love this. I love this scripture here. No deprivation. Now to him who is able, him is capitalized, that's deity, that's God, that's Jesus Christ. What is he able to do? He's able to do anything, folks. God can do anything, all right? He's not going to leave us hanging. He's not going to leave us out to dry. He's not going to uh, forsake us, folks. Now, to him who is able to do 
and I love these two, exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or we think. What do you need today? Folks, he's got it. All right? What do you, what do you need? You need peace? Folks, he's got it. Okay? All right? You, you need love? Folks, he's got it. You need gentleness? Any of the fruits of the Spirit, he's got it. All right? We have all those things in Jesus Christ. Now, to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. All right? That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. I hope you understand that when you uh, ask Christ to come into your life, the Holy Spirit came into your life. Folks, that's the third person in the Trinity. All right? We pray to God. We've accepted Jesus Christ. But Jesus even told his disciples, I'm not going to leave you down here without anything. Man, I'm going to give you something. And folks, that Holy Spirit rocked the world in Acts chapter 2. That same Holy Spirit is inside of us. Everything we need. Hey, you need boldness? You have it. You just have to uh, appropriate that. You have to uh, ask God for it. You have to uh, depend on the Holy Spirit for it. To Him be the glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and amen. Folks, God created you, God has walked with you, and God is going to see you through till the end. And folks, I understand the end. The end is not death, folks. That truly is the beginning for Christians. All right, so we, we, we should not be intimidated. We should, there's no deprivation in us. We don't lack anything. Everything we need is in Jesus Christ. Everything that we need is in God. Third thing I want you to hear, not only no intimidation, no deprivation, but no accusation. Look at verse 33. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? i tell you who will do that. That's Satan, folks. He is, he is called the accuser. The accuser. And you know what he does? He really messes with our minds. He really does. He'll bring up the past all the time. He'll tell you how sorry you are. What does the Bible say? Agree with your adversary quickly. When Satan tells me I'm sorry, I'm a sorry dude. I say, you're right. You are so right. But I'm also forgiven. I'm also loved. I'm also a child of God. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It, it is God who justifies. Folks, when Satan looks at us, and even if we were in the court of law, you know what Satan says every time? Guilty. You are guilty. You are guilty before God. Folks, we all know we mess up. We all fall short of the glory of God. And he accuses us. Don't live in those accusations. All right? Don't. I mean, you think of, of the disciples even. Okay? I mean, all of them at one time or another failed Jesus Christ. I mean, we, we hear about Peter the most because he denied Christ, which is not a good thing to do. But folks, God in Jesus restored Peter. Okay? I mean, even... Even Philip, there, there was others just, you know, even John. John says, man, are you the Christ or is there somebody else? Okay, there's doubt in people's minds. But folks, he's going to accuse you all the time. It's going to be nonstop, and, and we don't have to live in that. What we have to live in, and the thing that I love is no accusation because of God's mercy. I wrote three words down under here, his mercy. What is his mercy? Not giving us what we deserve. Grace. Grace. Giving us what we don't deserve. That's grace. And the third thing, when it comes to accusation, is forgiveness. Folks, mercy, grace, and forgiveness comes from God. And it is God who justifies us. We can't justify. We can't clean up enough. We can't be good enough. We can't read the Bible enough. We can't pray enough to be justified before God. That's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ. We are justified through the blood of Jesus Christ. So there is no 
accusation. Revelation chapter 12. Go with me to Revelation 12, verse 10. Revelation 12, verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. Will you let those words sink into your heart tonight and into your mind? Look what it says. Now salvation, okay? We have been saved. Strength comes from God. We are being saved, all right? Uh, the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. We will be saved, okay? All of these are true. All of these are yes and amen. For the accuser of our brethren, who accuses them before God night and day, has been cast down. You remember the story of Job and then Job chapter 1. I mean, you know, the scripture says that uh, 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 Job was an uh, upright man. Okay, And again, folks, he wasn't perfect, but, but he eschewed evil. He, he, he was righteous in everything. And what does Satan do? Satan accuses even, even Job. Okay, he said, hey, if you just take your hand off him, he'll curse you. So he, I'm just telling you folks, he accuses everyone. He accuses everyone. Now look at verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Folks, I'm telling you, uh, I, I spoke of prayer on on Sunday night, and an important thing I forgot to say, somewhere in every prayer you pray, you need to say, in Jesus' name. Now, a lot of people, and, and I find myself doing this, I end the prayers in that, but I'm almost thinking, and, and what I've been reading, and what I've been practicing, it's better to do it at the beginning of the prayer. And I tell you, it wouldn't hurt to say it, Okay, we are here tonight in Jesus' name. I am praying tonight in Jesus' name, and then tack it on to the end also. Put it on to the end. Why? There is power in his name. I love the hymn. There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. <laughs> Reminds me of the guy that says, I want to be so full of Jesus that when a mosquito bites me, he goes away singing, there's power in the blood, there's power in the blood. Folks, we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's how, uh, that's, that, that's, that's how we shouldn't be intimidated and uh, we shouldn't uh, worry about what Satan thinks. Honestly, folks, I don't care what Satan thinks about me. He's not going to think anything good about me. So do not worry about his accusations. And it says, the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not live, love their lives uh, even to death. Folks, that's dedication. That's dedication. And I, I've said it many times, I have no problem uh, dying for the cause of Christ. I have no problem. It would be an honor to do that, folks. I don't have a death wish. I really don't. But I'm telling you, I want to live and serve our Lord and Savior. So we see there's no intimidation, no deprivation, no accusation, no condemnation, no condemnation. Look at verse 34. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God. Folks, we are not condemned, okay? We are not guilty because Jesus Christ took our place on that cross. And furthermore, is also risen. Folks, that's the power of the resurrection. We have resurrection power at our disposal also. Okay, We have victory in Jesus. We have the Holy Spirit uh, uh, in us. That same resurrection power. And it's not that we should be able to resurrect the dead. Some people misinterpret that. Folks, that's God's business. That's God's thing, okay? It's saying that that kind of power, that, that is, you know, the Holy Spirit power is in us and who is even at the right hand of God uh, who makes intercession for us. You know what he says? I mean, he can say, hey, devil, leave him alone. That's my child right there. Just leave him alone. 
and, and we are not condemned. Folks, I'm telling you, uh, if we were in a court of law, you know, before we were saved, what the judge would probably do, he'd, he'd say guilty and he'd throw the book at us, uh, you know, uh, uh, is a phrase that we use. But now that we're saved, our name was written in a book. And that book is the book of life, folks. So there's no condemnation. He does not judge us uh, because of our sin. That sin was paid for on the cross. Look at Romans 8. Just turn back to the first Romans 8.1. I love this verse. Now there is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Jesus Christ. Okay? Uh, not guilty, folks. We are not condemned. We are not sentenced to death anymore. Who does not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Jesus Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. There is no condemnation, folks. We are free. I hope you understand that as a Christian. You are free. Folks, God's done it all. God's done everything. All right? Salvation is God. Okay? It's Him loving us. It's Him forgiving us. It's Him giving us confidence. Okay? It's Him not condemning us. John chapter 8. Look at John 8. John chapter 8, verse 36. The Bible says, Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. Folks, I'm telling you, we are free. We are free. There is no condemnation. Uh, we are not guilty. The debt has been paid in full. And the last thing I want you to see, and this is the best part, I saved the best for last, or the writer actually saved the best for last. There is no separation. No separation. Look at verse 35. And who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Notice how in these particular tests, he, que he keeps uh, asking questions. Okay? He's asking questions. Who shall separate us? Let me answer that question. Nothing. Nobody can separate us from the love. Folks, God's love is not human love. God's love is not conditional. God's love is supernatural. God's love is unconditional. God's love, I mean, when you just read the love chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you can see, I mean, you could literally put God's name in where the word love is. Okay? God's love is patient. God's love is kind. God's love, and you can just go through that. I hope sometimes you just need to read that whole chapter, and everywhere you see the word love, put his love. Why? Because God's love is real, folks. It is real. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? I mean, we're in tribulation right now. I didn't say we're in the tribulation. We are in tribulation. Just look around. Uh, shall distress? We're distressed. Persecution? Folks, it's coming. It's coming. There are famines. There are nakedness. There's peril. There is sword. See, uh, in third world countries, people die for the cause of Christ, folks. It's real. It's real. Even though it's not happening here, it is real. For your sake, we are killed all the day long, and we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. And sometimes it even seems like Christians aren't winning. But folks, I'm telling you, we are winning. We are winning. We have won. The victory is ours. In verse 37, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors, through him who loves us. And what is this? No separation? Folks, it's security of the believer. Security of the believer. Once saved, and I like to put the word truly saved, always saved. Always saved. And this is one of this, these verses that I'm about to read, and I'm going to share another one uh, with you. That it just it shows that. You can't lose your salvation. If you got it, you can't lose it. God's not going to take it away from you. He's not going to penalize you. Uh, he is, his, his love uh, is, is unconditional. It is real, and there is no separation. Yet in all these things, we're more than conquerors. 
See, the wording, and I, I've said this many times, folks, every word in the Bible means something. If it just said we are conquerors, that would be a true statement. But we are more than conquerors. And sometimes when I look at some Christians and look at their face, I mean, they look so dejected. They look so down and out. They look like, oh, man, just I said, what's wrong with you? Well, have you got an hour? <laughs> you know, folks, we are conquerors. We can overcome anything with God. Anything, any situation in life. We can conquer. We let life conquer us when we should be conquerors according to the Word of God. Yet in all these things we're more than conquerors through Him who loved us. You can't do it on your own, folks. You can't. You can't do it on your own. Verse 38, 38 For I'm persuaded that neither death nor life. Okay? Death is intimate. intimate, intimate not it. I can't even say the word. Death is coming. Let me just change the word, okay? Death is coming, and we should not fear death, folks. All right, if God tarries, we should not fear death. We should not fear life, nor angels, nor principalities. Folks, angels are on our side. Angels are protecting us. Principalities, I'm telling you, there, there are demons out there nor things to come, nor height. You folks that are scared of height, oh, you better, hey, hey. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You notice twice he says, nothing can separate us. Folks, nothing can take your salvation away. Nothing why? Because of God's everlasting love. His everlasting love. It is in Jesus Christ. John 10. Go with me to John 10. John chapter 10. Verse 27. John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life. Folks, eternal is forever. Forever and ever and ever. And they shall never perish. Know the wording in this. Eternal is forever. Never is an absolute. Will never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. I've used this illustration before, but I think it's, I think it's very, very appropriate. When you get saved, it begins with God, and Jesus is a part of that. And I'm telling you, uh, God wraps his hand around you. Jesus wraps his hand around you when you get saved. And the Holy Spirit is described as a seal. That seal means it can never be broken. For you to be not saved, somebody would have to break the seal of the Holy Spirit would have to take away the hand of Jesus and would have to take away the hand of God to get to you. Folks, that's not going to happen. According to the Word of God, it's not going to happen. You shall never perish, nor shall anyone snatch you out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. Folks, how much plainer can this be? Notice, this is Jesus' words. This is Jesus' promise to you, all right? It's not one of those, my daddy can beat your daddy up, okay? Jesus' daddy can take care of everyone. Everyone, folks, is greater than all, and no one's able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Why did they say it twice? For, for emphasis, folks. For emphasis. It's just saying, you, you heard me say it once. I want to make sure you heard me the first time, so I'm going to say it again. Nothing can stat, snatch you. Folks, it's called security. Security of the believer. And I and my Father are one. Folks, hallelujah. What a Savior. What kind of love is this, folks? It's God's love. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you that we don't have to be intimidated. 
God, I thank you that you've given us everything that we need. Lord, I pray that we won't listen to Satan. Lord, he'll never give up. As long as we're living and breathing, he's going to accuse us. And God, I thank you that you paid the price. We are not condemned anymore. You have said not guilty. And God, that should be more than good enough for us. And God, I thank you for the, the no separation. Uh, even the word separation is a negative connotation. And I thank you, Lord, that you love us with an everlasting love. You have promised us heaven. You have promised us everlasting life. You have promised us to be with us until the very end. And God, I thank you that we are secure in Jesus Christ. Lord, I can go to bed tonight. I can lay my head on the pillow. And to be honest, it wouldn't matter whether I woke up or not. Because if I died in my sleep, I would wake up in heaven. And God, I I know the older I get, the more I long for heaven. And God, I just thank you for that, that promise. And I thank you for all who have went before us. God, this past year really has been a hard year, Lord. We've lost a lot of our church members. And the past few years, Lord, we've lost just uh, just saints, Lord, folks that have been here for years and years and years. And God, I just can't wait to see them again, Lord, just to see how they are and just to talk with them and to fellowship with them. And Lord, I thank you that uh, we're going to get to see you in Jesus face to face. And God, I pray that we would understand that your love is deeper than any kind of love we've ever had. Man's love is conditional, but God's love is everlasting. And God, I pray that we would live there, that we would be encouraged about these promises because God never breaks a promise. God, I pray that our focus would be on you. Our focus would be on the word. Our focus would be on encouraging people. Our focus would be on uh, winning people to Jesus Christ. God, we love you. We thank you for these promises. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.